Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Wednesday, October 9th, 2013, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight. We were told if you have a low credit score, it could affect what you pay for premiums. Obamacare, making insurance affordable by raising premiums. And get ready for mandatory walking helmets. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. We're going to change your diaper. It's sexy. And in every ancient culture, women got out of hand. They said, you know what? It's really sexy if you bind your feet up where you can't walk. <laughs> Just sit there and shut up. <laughs> They're like, oh, it's trendy. What you haven't seen before, I think, from the vantage point of a lot of uh, world leaders is the notion that uh, one party in Congress might blow the whole thing up if they don't get their way. Uh, you know, you have some ideological extremist who has a, uh, a big bankroll, and they can s entirely skew our politics. And there are a whole bunch of uh, members of Congress right now who privately will tell you, I know uh, our positions are unreasonable, but we're scared that if we don't go along with the Tea Party agenda or the ex uh, some particularly extremist agenda, that we'll be challenged from the right. You don't pay a ransom. You don't provide concessions for Congress doing its job and America paying its bills. What? Wasn't Obama the one who was just negotiating with militant extremists in Syria earlier this year and they were demanding that the U.S. send them weapons and then Obama was trying to negotiate with Congress to get them to send arms to these militant extremists? But these so-called political extremists, no, he doesn't want to negotiate with them. He's rejected every resolution that the Republicans have sent his way. He refuses to go to the table, but yet he insists that it's the Republicans who are being unreasonable. He's like a mafia boss, and he just wants what he wants. And in order to get it, he sends his goons out to break proverbial legs and to make sure that you feel the pain of defying the great Lord Obama. And his administration is being extremely petty and selective with enforcing the shutdown. They're arresting people at the Grand Canyon, throwing the elderly out of their homes, shutting down all the national parks. They won't let Catholic priests uh, on military bases uh, do the Catholic sacraments like mass and baptisms, or they could get arrested. They're arresting veterans who visit their memorial. Uh, but of course, they've allowed an immigration rally to take place on the closed National Mall. That goes on and on. He is the terrorist, and he wants you to feel the pain. Welcome to Tyranny Watch. I'm Gigi Renetta. Well, our government just can't help itself. Now it's keeping liquor from selling. In Kentucky, the partial government shutdown is causing problems for owners of a distillery. John Ingram and Denise Story are co-owners of Jefferson Street Whiskey Company. They have all the required permits and licenses so they can legally start distilling, but they can't sell their products because the government has not yet approved the distillery's labels. And in Pittsburgh, Maggie's Farm Rum will be ready to drink, but you can't have any because labeling has to be approved by the Alcohol and Tobacco and Tax and Trade Bureau. So no new whiskey or rum for you, America, or oceanfront views, because Old Smoky doesn't want you to be able to see the beautiful American views while there's a government shutdown. San Francisco's Cliff House was forced to close last Thursday as part of the government shutdown because all concessions in national parks are required to be closed. So in response to the shutdown, the Cliff House owners opened anyway on Monday, October 7th, only to be closed again. The last statement reads, while the local park service officials have been sympathetic and helpful in relaying the Cliff House's concerns to park service headquarters in Washington, D.C., the decisions are driven by D.C., which is instructed that the facility must close. Way to go, Smokey, destroying businesses in the United States. USA, USA. And let me ask you, if a person goes to a park, do you actually chase them all the way home or do you follow them in your SUV and hunt them down that way? In Pennsylvania, a man who went jogging in a National Historic Park was slapped with a $100 fine because the area was closed due to the shutdown. Really? And like that's not enough, the National Park Services went and removed handles off of water fountains. In what looks to be a really spiteful maneuver, 
The NPS even removed handles from water spigots along the Chesapeake and Ohio Canal, where bikers and joggers exercise, as well as along the Great Allegheny Passage, just to ensure people don't get any water from them. And you can fight the tyranny by signing up for PrisonPlanet.tv. You can give your username and password up to 10 people. Let's have a real budget cut. Let's start with the National Park Services. So long, Smokey. I am Gigi Arnetta with Tyranny Watch on the InfoWars Nightly News. Obama wants you to feel the pain, but you should feel the tyranny. America, feel the oppression. <sighs> well, if you were one of those elusive people who just so happened to be able to sign up for Obamacare via the healthcare.gov website, be sure to read the fine print. Obamacare Marketplace. Personal data can be used for law enforcement and audit activities. The user agreement states, any information that you provide to us in your application will be used only to carry out the functions of Maryland Health Connection. The only exception to this policy is that we may share information provided in your application with the appropriate authorities for law enforcement and audit activities. The site does not specify if appropriate authorities refers only to state authorities or if it could include the federal government as well. Neither is there any detail on what type of law enforcement and or audit activities would justify the release of the personal information or who exactly is authorized to make such a determination. So just by signing up, your information is being shared with the IRS. But why should that concern you? One of the concerns is actually about credit scores. People are being asked to show their credit score when signing up. That's right, Lisa. It is asking you to show your credit score. It is required. And we were told if you have a low credit score, it could affect what you pay for premiums. So a day later, the woman who told reporters that said she made a mistake. It's not true that you're required to provide your credit score. So who is this Ann Packham that made that statement? She's the lead navigator in Florida. That's right. The person licensed by the state to explain the Affordable Care Act to you and me is confused and the site itself is still bogged down with glitches so no one knows what's actually there none of us can find out how much our deductible is going to be and how high are the premiums we're going to be paying and that is the plan i don't think the marketplace is going to be open until after the government shutdown ends that way obama can get what he wants and then the reality of how much this affordable care act is actually going to cost you and me is going to be abundantly clear and it's going to be a lot more than what we expect, and we're all going to be very, very angry about it, but it'll be too late. So the Republicans and Democrats are both playing to their bases right now during this whole shutdown. But both sides know that Obamacare must pass in order to please their corporate masters. Just look at how high those stock prices are for the insurance companies. They have absolutely soared. So neither the Republicans or the Democrats are going to allow those stocks to crash because they are bought and paid for by the insurance companies who wrote the Affordable Care Act. And who owns the biggest insurance company out there? The Federal Reserve. They bought AIG in 2008 with our bailout money. And they're the ones that helped draft the Affordable Care Act. So this is not about helping the poor. This is about transferring the wealth, continuing to transfer the wealth to the 1% of the 1%. And those terrorist tea partiers, they're probably the only ones who aren't bought and paid for because they're just still pretty new to this two-party system. And that could be why they still have yet to sell out entirely to Wall Street. So we'll have to see. But it's apparent that banksters can commit fraud, they can fund drug cartels and terrorist organizations, but just like the mafia, anyone who challenges their banking system will be taken out. About a week ago, the FBI arrested the man who allegedly owned Silk Road, an online source of illegal drugs that accepted only bitcoins. What is most interesting is that the FBI has not yet been able to seize over 600,000 bitcoins without his password. The FBI can't crack it, or maybe they don't want to crack it. Maybe they want to use it as an excuse to try to shut down bitcoin. While the war on drugs has been an absolute failure by any metric, the war on property rights and the war on due process has been a resounding success for the feds. We've seen an abuse of civil forfeiture without due process 
Without people being charged with a crime, in many cases, the people who have their property seized are never charged with a crime. So one of the key reasons to stop prohibition is the ludicrous unconstitutional extremes the government has taken in property seizures. But it isn't just that bitcoins are hard for the feds to seize. They also offer something the feds hate even more, and that's privacy. Under the Bank Secrecy Act, financial institutions are required to report transactions to the feds and must also, quote, know, in other words, verify, customer identities. In other words, the Bank Secrecy Act means there is no secrecy with banks. But as we've seen with HSBC, when large banks know their customers are drug cartels or terrorists, the feds leave them alone if they're a big bank that supports the central bank fiat money scheme. HSBC was caught laundering money for Sinaloa and Zeta drug cartels. They were caught laundering money for Hamas, Hezbollah, and Al-Qaeda. Yet Assistant Attorney General Lanny Brewer said, HSBC would almost certainly have lost its banking license in the U.S. and the future of the institution would have been under threat and the entire banking system would have been destabilized if they hadn't just given them a slap on the wrist, if they had enforced the laws against money laundering. But HSBC was too big to jail because they serve the fiat banking system and they partner with the feds in running drugs and in arming terrorists. The feds hate Bitcoin because it serves as an alternative to their banking system and their control. They would love to destabilize it, but that's not going to be easy. If the government tries to shut down Bitcoin like they did Liberty Reserve, they're going to have a problem. There is no single person for them to move against like Badovsky at Liberty Reserve. Bitcoins are both anonymous and decentralized, so it'll be very difficult for the feds to try to shut it down. If they do, they will drive it underground. But if they can get a hold of the 600,000 Bitcoins, which are 5% of the outstanding total of Bitcoins at the time, they could try to destabilize it. Good luck with that. It will be very transparent if they try. For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight. All right, well, stay with us because after the break, you're going to find out the fashion trend that's taking the trendies by storm. And then after that, Tosh Plumley speaks with Alex Jones about being shut down by the man. Stick around. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. People on a crowded commuter train in San Francisco were so wrapped up in texting and looking at their tablets 
that they failed to see a man draw his gun several times and point it across the aisle. In fact, authorities said they didn't notice the gunman until he randomly shot and killed a university student. The district attorney said, these people are in very close proximity with him and nobody sees this. They're just so engrossed, texting and reading and whatnot. They're completely oblivious of their surroundings. People are already zombified with their phones permanently attached to their hands, but just wait until Google rolls out their transhumanist plans. People will be completely oblivious. What I call the creepy line and the, the Google policy about a lot of these things is to get right up to the creepy line but not cross it. I would argue that implanting things in your brain is, a, is beyond the creepy line. Mine in particular. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, at least for the moment, uh, until the technology gets better. Well, until that technology does become available, Google is going to sell transhumanism to the trendies via Vogue magazine. The magazine recently published a photo shoot set in a dystopian, futuristic landscape to promote Google Glass. Paul Watson writes, the creepy images send the message that anyone who refuses to completely sacrifice privacy and embrace Google Glass is obsolete and cannot be part of a future world run by vapid, emotionless authoritarians who behave more like robots than humans. This fashionista's vision of a dystopian future world is actually right outside our producer Marcos Morales' hometown. He is very trendy. You want to know what else is trendy? Helmets. In the last decade, we have seen actions by the nanny state in North America, but also in Europe, that are beyond the absurdity that the great mind of Kurt Vonnegut could even come up with. We have seen dodgeball and then tag banned all across the country in thousands of school districts. Now they've announced in multiple states no more footballs or other balls will be allowed or other recreational materials on the playground during recess because someone might get hurt. And it's because of this tyranny, that's what it is, meant to make us totally domesticated slaves that is being pushed by the federal government through the states that I thought of the idea of sending our reporters out in Austin, Texas to talk to the public and see if they would accept wearing helmets by law to be able to walk down the street for their safety and for Obamacare to lower the price of premiums. We talked to 20 people and 14 of them signed the petition to pass a law to make the general population wear helmets when you walk down the street. Think of the absurdity of this. And to try to wake them up, the petition was even titled chumps. Of course, the universal term for meaning you're an idiot, a mark, a fool, a schmuck, a, a, a sucker. This is not satire. This is not a joke. This is really happening. This is the amazing level of conditioning and brainwashing that the general public, especially trendies, are under. Here is Leanne McAdoo and Josh Owens' report. Can I get you to sign my petition to uh, compel people to wear helmets while they're walking? Sure. Awesome. Can, we, can I get you to sign up to make everyone well, wear one? Though, it's like, to just go would ahead. that be a mandatory law or something you're saying? That? I mean, I hope so. We can get it passed. Oh my gosh, texting while walking. Texting I, while walking. Do you I know was in New Jersey? Actually, about to place a call. Uh, still, you know, in New Jersey, they're giving out $85 tickets for people that are caught texting while walking, and they're going to start doing that here. That's why I am trying to get a petition to get people to wear helmets while they're walking. Oh, perfect. Yeah, it's great. Everyone who just doesn't want to pay attention, who just wants to like zombie out, can just walk in a special lane wow. that's made just for them. Wow. But until then, everyone just needs to have like protective gear on so that I'm not going to hurt you, you wow. won't hurt me. Yeah, sure, I'll sign. I think it's a good idea. I will. Yeah. You want to make everybody wear helmets? <laughs> These dummies need to wear it. <laughs> that's crazy. Just make everything safe. For me, I'm a libertarian, you know? For me, I feel like as long as you don't cause any harm to Ooh, libertarist. To just get people to start wearing helmets to keep people safe on the streets. 
Hold on. <laughs> that way everyone can just talk on their phones and text freely and they don't have to worry and it'll help keep like insurance costs down. Right. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. While walking? Yes. Why while walking? So they don't endanger themselves. Oh, oh. Say that again. I was texting and I slipped right on a thing just like this and it was wet and I was like, oh! and it was so embarrassing and everyone saw and they were all laughing at me and I couldn't sue anyone for my butt. I hit my tailbone and I was like limping for a week. Like we're all in this together. Like we have socialized healthcare now. So it's like everyone's responsible for everyone. So if I fall, you fall. Well, you can get them like form fitted to your head. They have like special gear. You can make them like tactical. You could get like with the, Put the water bottles, they have those that Super you wear cool. at the b baseball park. Yeah, I mean, I like helmets. They're already kind of starting this whole thing, like in New York, they're banning dodgeball, banning other sports that are going to hurt people and get people injured. And like one of the most dangerous things is, is walking. Yeah. People just walk out in front of a bus. Yes. So. I'll sign it. I mean, it makes sense technically, so. Guys, would you like to sign this petition to get people to wear helmets while walking? Super trendy. Well, I think UT were super trendy, so we can get it. What starts here changes the world. I'm, I'm down for it. We can't be trusted, and that's why if we can just make this a, a law, a rule that we can enforce. Yeah, no, of course, tickets for anyone without helmets. Godspeed. You can do it. I believe. Thanks. <laughs> Hashtag trendy, but don't worry, we are not totally screwed. Not everybody signed it. You want to sign my petition to get compel people to wear helmets while they're walking? Uh, I know your hair is awesome, but it's very dangerous for you to be out here on the streets, especially with all these people not paying attention. And uh, it'll help Obama pass the Affordable Care Act. Uh, I'm good. Thank you. you sure? Yeah. I'm gonna have to think about that. All right. Sorry. Well, be Not safe. Ready yet. Be Thank safe you. out there. You seem very concerned, and I think what you're doing is fine, you know. But at the same time, we got people like me that's gonna say no to you. But you know, if you're successful, you know, then best wishes to you. <laughs> All right. But you have a good day. You too. Have a good day. I felt really bad for calling that guy a libertarist. He was really, really nice and very politically aware. So I apologize. Mr. Libertarian out there if you ever see that report. Now stay with us because after the break, Benghazi whistleblower Tosh Plumley will be speaking with Alex Jones. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show. We take this business of waking people up very seriously here at InfoWars. That's why we have such a huge outreach operation. And it wouldn't be possible without the InfoWars magazine. And we have a very special October edition for you. We're going to make it super easy for you to get interactive with your friends and family by giving you these lovely cutout masks. Not one, but two very scary educational tools for you to hit the street. Join with the collective. Just go to sleep and when you awaken, there'll be no more free will. And whatever you do, don't get a copy of October's special InfoWars.com magazine. Whatever you do, don't resist. Give in. 260,000 of you could be out there as Obamacare or Prozac, the killer clown. Hi, kids! It's me, your favorite selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor! Just cut along the dotted lines, cut some holes for the eyes, and attach a few rubber bands, and you are ready to wake up America this Halloween. Remember, kids, Obamacare is for you and your family, and so is Prozac and Ritalin. So whatever you do, don't secure your copy of InfoWars magazine and resist, because death is good for you. Yeah. 
You can pick up your copy today at the InfoWars store. You can always buy these in bulk at cost. And for a limited time, the annual subscription is just $39.95. Call now because operators are standing by. Obama, we love you. Because people need to know that Obamacare is bone chillingly frightening. <laughs> Welcome back. Tosh Plumlee blew the lid off the Benghazi scandal a couple of weeks ago when he revealed some shocking information on The Alex Jones Show. Well, he's returned today with some very intense questions he has for the Obama administration that most journalists are too afraid to ask. I would rather see the American people ask these questions. Right. In fact, everybody should go to town halls and ask these questions so they can get them at your Facebook. They're in our article, former CIA whistleblower targeted by government. Why don't they ask them? Why don't they answer? Why don't they answer and give Miss Smith? Back, let's focus back to what started me opening that Facebook page. Let's start back to why I come on your program. Let's go back to what happened when I contacted Jim Mars, who helped me start all this. Let's refocus about, and these questions are very important. Mrs. Smith should be asking these questions. The American people should be asking these exactly. questions. Exactly. You've already done a lot of work. You've done it over and over again, and people need to get up off their hind ends and do it. So let's get into your last points. Well, they talk about, everybody talks about and blasts their lips around the country, but nobody wants to go out on point and attack. And I, when, I, when I say attack, I don't mean rabble rouse and talk a bunch of bullshit out of your lips and your butt and all that kind of stuff. I'm talking about facts. <laughs> Is the United States little-known direct commercial sales program, also known as the Blue Lantern Report, being used as a cutout to secretly aid both sides of a Middle Eastern civil war? Yes or no, Mr. President, Mr. Senate, Mr. Whoever just heard this? Answer, yes or no. We want it on record. If you say no and we find out later, you lied to the American people. That's my goal. That's my aim. I'm very adamant about it. My whole life is hanging on what the hell happened on these questions. Now, why is it that these questions will not be answered for Mrs. Smith, who lost her son in Benghazi, and also the other people that lost loved ones in Benghazi? I have another question. I'm full of questions. I'm a journalist. That's my job, to ask questions. If you'd like to see the rest of that interview, and I know you do, head on over to Prison Planet TV and become a subscriber. You'll find the rest of that interview, as well as the Alex Jones Show, the nightly news, all of our special reports, movies, rants. Share this transmission today. Join us again here tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central for the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Leanne McAdoo. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com slash show.